period, a time of peace and quietness. He says, break off thy sins. Break off thy iniquities. Do you understand? That is the focus of the ministry of a true prophet, of a commissioned preacher, of a Bible pastor, a pastor that actually stands on the word. That is the focus of ministry. Break up thy sins. And it's all over the Bible. Let me show you a few verses. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 31. Leviticus chapter 15. Break it all. Put it all. Put it away. Separate yourself from your sin. That is the message the Lord has given us, the Lord has given you. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 31. Thus says, Thus shall ye separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness. Separate them in your message. Tell them, break up your sin, break up your iniquity, that they die not in their uncleanness when they defile my tabernacle that is among them. And let's look at Genesis chapter 35. Genesis chapter 35, whether it's a prophet or a patriarch or a preacher or a priest, the same message. Break up thy sin. Break up thy iniquity. Genesis 35 verse 2. Then Jacob said unto, the, unto his household and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments. The same message, Joshua chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 14. Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. Daniel was not alone in telling the king, in saying, Break up thy iniquities, break up thy sin. That not just means separate yourself from your sin. Put away, put up your iniquity and your sin. In Joshua chapter 24 verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away, put away, break up, put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. And in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. In verse 23. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. Break it off, put it off, put it away. Separate yourself, turn away, repent. That's the message. In first Samuel chapter 7, verse 3 and verse 4. For Samuel, chapter 7, verses 3 and 4. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods. Put it away. Break it off. Separate from it. Repent and turn around. And I shall us from among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines then the children of Israel did put away Bealim and Ashtaroth and served the Lord only Ezra chapter 10 yes, there is the message of all the prophets of all the preachers of all the pastors and if we are really called of God will not be glossing over the evil, the iniquity, the sins of the people. We'll be telling them what all the prophets of the Bible, what they told the people. Put it away. Put it off. Cut it off. Break away all those iniquities and all those sins. Because if you don't, that iniquity will ruin you and drag you to the pit of hell forever and ever. And so you'll find us in the faithfulness of those prophets and those great men of God. And that's the same faithfulness that the Lord is calling us today. That you will say to the sinner, you'll say to the evildoer, you'll say to the people that are religious and not following the Lord, you'll say, cut it off 
break it up and put it away and put it up so that iniquity and sin will not be the ruin of your life. Ezra chapter 10, I'm reading to you from verse 2 and verse 3. Ezra chapter 10, but looking at verse 2 and verse 3, you'll find it's still the same message that the man of God is giving that other people have given. And Shek and Shekaniah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, and answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this sin. Now therefore, let us make a covenant with our God to put away. That's the solution. If there's going to be forgiveness, there must be repentance. If there's going to be a lengthening of thy tranquility, of thy peace, there must be a breaking away from sin. There must be a tearing away of iniquity, however precious or dear that thing might be to you. If God calls it a sin, put it away. It says to put away all the wives and such as are born of them according to the counsel of my Lord. And on of those that tremble at the commandment of our God. And let it be done according to the law, according to the word. Look at verse 19. And they gave their hands that they will put away the strange wives being guilty. And they offered the ram of the floor for their trespass. You see, in the time of Ezra, they told those Israelites who so have married strange wives. That is, they left their first wives, so they still kept their first wives, and then they brought in other strange women, concubines that they call wives. Second, third, and fourth. And then when the message came to them, that if they are looking for the forgiveness of God and the mercy of God, they will break up their sin. They will put away the strange wife. And then they will keep to the only wife the Lord had given them according to his word. We're looking at Job chapter 22 verse 23. Job chapter 22. We're looking at verse 23. I'm just showing you that all over the Bible, from Genesis all over, is put it away, cut it off, break it off, put it off, so that sin, iniquity, evil, the abomination of idol worshippers and of those who do not know the Lord will not be your ruin. Job chapter 22 verse 23, it says, If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up, thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. That is the word of the Lord. And then it says then in verse, in verse 27, Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. What those people said, the same thing you'll find in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1. In Isaiah chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 16. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 16. Wash you, make you clean, Put away. You see it all over the Bible. Break it off. Put it away. Put it off. Cut yourself loose from every abomination, every evil, every sin, every iniquity. It says, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, and plead for the widows. Come now. After you have put away the iniquity, come now. And let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient to put it away, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, can you tell me the rest? I thought God was looking at Daniel out of you. Daniel did not speak like that. Now speak like you are another Daniel of the day. Won't you go? You see, that's the real prophet. 
that is not afraid to tell everyone that if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. What Isaiah has done is not passing the baton, passing the responsibility and the duty to you and to me. And he's saying, go ahead and do that in your community as well. Isaiah chapter 58. Looking at verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. I show my people their transgression and they also check up their sins. And then he tells us in the verse, now in verse 9, in verse 9, Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer, and thou shalt cry, and shall say, and he shall say, Here I am, if thou take away. You see that? You see the message? You break it up. You take it off, you take it away, you put it off, you put it away, you separate yourself from every sin and every iniquity. If thou shalt take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and the speaking vanity. And then we're told in Jeremiah chapter 26, Jeremiah chapter 26. And I'm reading from verse 12, Jeremiah chapter 26, verse 12. Then spake Jeremiah unto all the princes of, and all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and against this city all the words that ye have heard. Therefore, now I made your ways and your doings. I made your ways. Don't quarrel with the message of the messenger. Quarrel with your sin and separate from your sin. Don't run away from the preacher or the prophet. Run away from your sin and mend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God. And the Lord will repent of him of the evil that he has pronounced against you. As for me, behold, I'm in your hands. Do with me as a seemeth good and meet unto you. That one doesn't matter. What matters is your relationship with God. Ezekiel chapter 11. In Ezekiel chapter 11, the same message, put it away, cut it off. I mean your ways, repent. Turn away from evil, turn away from sin. Repentance is the way into the forgiveness and the mercy and the salvation of the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 18. And they shall come hither. And they shall take away, take away all the detestable things thereof, and all the abominations thereof from this. That's what he wants, that's what he commands, and that's what he desires that every sinner will do, that you take away all those detestable, abominable things. Ezekiel chapter 18. In Ezekiel chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 30. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his way, saith the Lord, the Lord God, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away. You see that? The same thing, break off, take off, take away, put off, put away, cast away. First start your one, cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby you have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure. In the death of him that died, says the Lord God, wherefore turn yourselves and live ye. Hosea chapter 14. In Hosea chapter 14, so the same message the Lord is giving through Hosea. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God. For thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. 
take with you words and turn to the Lord and say unto him, Take away how many iniquities? All iniquity and receive us graciously. So will we render the cows of our leaves as sure shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses, neither will we say any more to the works of our hands. Ye are our gods, for in thee the fatherless find mercy. Don't you find then all over that all those true prophets of God, all those preachers of the saving truth, what they did was to tell the people their sin, and he told them, break it up, get it up. Take it away, cast it off, because that is the only way for us to be able to have the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God, the salvation of the Lord. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, repent therefore and be comforted, be turned around, let there be a transformation, let there be a change, that the life of the past, the sinful life of the past, the abominable life of the past, the idolatrous life of the past, the licentious life of the past, and the fleshly, worldly life of the past will become something that is forgotten and forgiven. Get it all. That's the message. Whether you are looking at the Old Testament or the New Testament, it is the same message. Turn off from the sin. Look at verse 26. So to you for God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you. In turning away every one of you from what? From his iniquities. We're looking at Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. We're looking at verse 30 and verse 31. Acts 17, verse 30. It says, At, at the times of this ignorance, God went out, but now commanded how many people? All men in how many places? Everywhere, every church, every land, every city, every place, everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has obtained, whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. You'll find that the word of God is very, very clear. It's calling everyone to repentance. We're looking at Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. In Colossians chapter 3, I'm reading from verses 8 and 9. Remember, break it off. Remember, put it off. Remember, cast it away. Remember, put it away. And remember, separate yourself from every sin, every iniquity, and every abominable, detestable sin. In Colossians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 8. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Ephesians chapter 4. In Ephesians chapter 4, I'm looking at verse 22 and verse 31. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22, that ye put off. You see, it's the same thing, Old Testament, New Testament, put it off. Break it off. Take it away. Cast it away. Separate yourself from it. Turn around. Repent. And mend your ways. That is the only part of the mercy of God. Verse 22, Ephesians chapter 4. And that he put off concerning the former conversation. The old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws. Verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking the put away from you with all malice. We have done that ourselves and will tell all people we are speaking to, they must repent. I said they will repent. 
and as you repent, the Lord will have mercy on them and will forgive them and give them the same salvation He has given us. He'll give all, He'll give them in Jesus' name. Now we've been in Babylon. What I mean is in our study, because Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. And then uh, Daniel told him, he said, Judgment is coming. It's, up, it's upon you, king. And the Lord is bringing the judgment upon you. Therefore, break up your sin. Come out of your sin. What are we telling the people today? Revelation now, chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18. We're looking at verse 4. Revelation chapter 18. In verse 4, it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, of her my people that she be not partakers of her sins, and that she receive not of her plagues. He's talking about the Babylon of the present day, the evil system of the present day, because this evil system of this present day is going to be judged like old Babylon. Look at verse 21. And the mighty angel took off his stone, like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. That's why in verse 4 it says, I heard that those of us who are living today, and you are seeing Babylon coming back again in the pollutions, in the abominations, in the idolatry, in the nightclubs, in all the drinking and the dancing, in the prostitution, in the fornication, in the adulteries, in all the worldliness. See Babylon coming 